Hey, Bio30. So we're going to talk about the ear now. Um, with the ear, it has two totally separate functions, which are linked and then very much so not linked. Um, hearing, obviously, and then also balance and equilibrium. Uh, the smallest bones in your body are actually in the ear, and they're called the ossicles, and they're like fully developed at birth. Um, we're going to divide our discussion of the ear into three sections. Uh, the outer ear, the inner ear, sorry, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. So the outer ear um, is has a function to amplify sound. So it's made up of the pinna, which is the external flap that funnels sound into the ear, uh, the auditory canal, which amplifies sound, making it louder, which is the tube part where you stick like Q-tips not very far into, um, and the tympanic membrane, which is your eardrum, whose purpose is to vibrate. <clears throat> the middle ear is the next section, and it's meant to also amplify sound. Now, it's filled with air, and the middle ear um, has those ossicles we talked about, those really small little three bones. And the ossicles vibrate and help amplify that sound. The oval window sends vibrations to the next section, the inner ear. Um, and it's smaller than the eardrum and it helps to amplify the sound. Now there are these little uh, hair cells in this section of the ear which move and as they bend uh, they send information to the brain about pitch and loudness of the uh, sounds that you're hearing. There's something called the eustachian tube in the middle ear as well, and it's what connects the middle ear to the mouth and the nose. And this allows for equalization of pressure between the internal and external ears. Um, if you've ever uh, driven on a highway or been in an airplane that went up really high and it came down really low and your ears were plugged and then they popped, that's the pressure trying to equalize in the eustachian tube. If you've ever had a crazy cold, and your eye, your your ears hurt, your throat hurts, your eyes are watering, your nose hurts. Um, you you know what your eustachian tube feels like. Um, and so when you have a buildup of fluids in the eustachian tube, you could have poor balance, you could have deafness as a result. The inner ear um, has those two main functions again: the hearing, which is solved by the cochlea. Uh, hair cells, those hair cells we talked about just a second ago, they are on this membrane. It's called the bacillar membrane. And this bacillar membrane, this little membrane with hair cells on it, um, will bend. The hair cells will bend um, when sound vibrations are felt. And so depending on how much the hair cells bend or how many hair cells bend, again, the brain will receive uh, information about pitch and or loudness of those sounds. The inner ear is also going to uh, be fluid filled and the semicircular canals are a portion of the ear that are involved in balance. And so movement of the fluid in the semicircular canals is what gives the, the mind, the brain rather, information about the body's movement. So you know you have semicircular canals because if anybody's ever taken you on a chair and spun you around, that feeling of still being really dizzy long after the um, chair has stopped spinning uh, is a result of the fluid in the semicircular canal of the inner ear still going in circles. So until that fluid stops spinning, you won't get that, you won't be able to shake that feeling of, whoa, I'm still spinning, even though the chair isn't spinning anymore. Um, we also have something called the vestibule. So the vestibule is going to be um, another section of the inner ear which is also involved in balance and this provides information about head position. Uh, so there's these little rocks, we'll call them stones, and these little stones um, are made up of calcium carbonate and they're basically, um, their fancy name, they're autoliths is the biological name for them, but just they're little calcium stones and these little stones will um, move in that liquid, the fluid of the vestibule, and as the stones push on the hair cells beneath them, uh, the brain receives information about where that head is in space and time. And so 
the vestibule is going to allow for the brain to know, okay, like my head is tilted down right now. My head is tilted up. My head, my head is turned to the left. And so as the little autoliths, those little stones push on the hair cells, the hair cells communicate to the brain, oh, okay, here's where your head is in space and time. So it helps you with balance. So the semicircular canals and the vestibule are for balance in the inner ear, and the cochlea is for hearing in the inner ear. But we really take advantage of a lot of the fluids and the hair cells to have this information uh, received by the brain. So again, there's that vestibule, uh, and you've got head position, which is going to be uh, communicated to the brain. The auditory nerve is what's going to carry all the nervous impulses from the ear to the temporal lobe where it can be processed in the brain. Semicircular canals, uh, like I said, contain uh, these little things called autoliths, which are these little stones, and the stones will move and push on the hair uh, depending on uh, where you are in space and time. Well, sorry, my bad. That that's in the vestibule. In the semicircular canals, there's no autoliths. There's just the fluid, and the fluid will push the hair cells in a certain direction depending on where your body is in space and time. The vestibule is specifically for head movement in space and time, and that's what takes advantage of those little autoliths, these little calcium carbonate chunks, stones. And as they push on these smaller hairs, they give the brain information about where the head is positioned. So semicircular canals are for body positioning using a very similar fluid and hair system. The vestibule, along with those autoliths, those little stones, help decide or communicate where the brain uh, to the brain where the head is in space and time. Um, we're going to talk about the organ of corti and actual processing of sound to the brain and the uh, auditory nerve in the next video. So thanks guys.